Last time on Let's Turn It Up World in Japan. No matter what happens with Free Happy Hour, you meet new fun friends for free. So, this is Maggie, you guys. It's amazing. She's actually from Canada, Japanese, lots of family here, and loves the same place we love. That one was a little like chewing gum. I'm still going. That's、wow. so good. And we're here by ourselves. We're on our own now. Everybody got scared of us. Right? They all left us alone here in our immersive experience. A little private dining room. Ah, a new day and a new RV. We are here in Tokyo picking up our new RV for our next adventures. I still don't know all about the adventures because, of course, t a y is the planner. But we're really excited to share with you our new home on wheels here. Now, it's very different, very similar, but also very different than the one we had last time. And we're definitely excited to give you guys a tour of this RV here. Now, we do have to move because I will tell you this driving in Hokkaido versus driving here is wonderful. Way different. The pace is so much faster and the speeds are so much faster. So, we're gonna try and load things up in here as much as we can. Dave is right now loading things. I gotta get help to help helping him with that. He's also finishing the paperwork. And there's a few major differences in this one that I'm not too sure how I feel about that just yet. But we'll explain to you more as we、uh, get to our destination. We have about an hour and a half drive to our next destination. That's all I know so far. We'll tell you more in just a minute.、Uh, grocery store! So, how is it、uh, driving the new RV? Is it the same as the old one? <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> it drives similar, but we're in Tokyo. So, it's a very different feel. We aren't in Hokkaido anymore. Old you. We aren't in Kansas anymore. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that, y'all,、right. because it's so true. There's no patience here. I felt like Hokkaido was very slow paced, relaxed. You know, just enjoy what was around you. Tokyo's like, get to A to B. It's like New York. Move it, yeah. It's like New York driving. But that's where you gotta stay focused. But you're doing a great job. And,、uh, and this is a, you're getting a little briefing of our tiny home on wheels. We cannot wait to give you a tour of this thing. But we gotta get to our destination. I think we'll do the tour then. I think so, yeah. All right. Just for a reference point, we are actually on episode six. Tanya. <laughs> Had made a very quick pit stop here to use the restrooms, but also there's a spot here for ramen. But it was a really fun drive, it wasn't as bad as I thought. I think maybe because we're somewhat getting used to the drive here in Japan. Dave did a phenomenal job, I can't knock it. He was so smooth, I was actually able to get some work done without even thinking twice about it. But we're on our way to a, a I guess you could say a parking lot, camping ground situation in Miura. Mi Miura. So we're looking forward to that right now. I think we're gonna have some ramen, use a little restroom, and then continue on our way. Now, this is definitely a little bit more towards on the coast side of things. It feels a little bit more refreshing, a little warmer. Definitely blue skies and no snow. <laughs> This is our first time kind of getting a, a little lunch at a rest area. Yeah. Highway rest area. See how it is. So I think we actually have to order by the vending machine on this one. Yes, I'm looking at this is like the menu that's over here as well. Okay.、And、yes, you have to order. And this is our first time trying this. I think you can probably use cash for it as、okay. well. So it looks like we're getting two of these. So one. Oh, perfect. You put two. And then I think we're getting two, two of those. 
which would mean it's 2200 yen. All right, I think we have cash. All right. I'm super impressed. We just stopped in just a regular, basically almost like a highway rest area. And they have this amazing spot here to get some really good food. So we're definitely excited. We're hungry. It's been a long day since coming out of Tokyo and picking up the RV, but it smells really good. Wow, that smells really nice. That smells really good. Mm, this is amazing. Face. I mean, just a, like a, basically a highway rest area. I can't believe it. I know. It's awesome. So definitely gonna give the highway special a try. This is their number one. It's what they've advertised outside on the billboard. And with the onions, the pork, the rice. I mean, look at that. Right, it kind of comes with the soup. It's cool. Mmm. I think these are like little pepper flakes. That is really good. I'm just blown away every time we come to any spot we've gone to to eat it's just been really I know. welcoming and delicious like this is a rest area and you're getting like right. ramen or rice and pork and soup it's delicious and, and the staff super friendly too yeah we asked permission by the way if we were okay to film in here and they were very welcoming for us to come in and film as a matter of fact the cook that behind us when we turned the camera to her she was like <laughs> <laughs> what do you think once i grab it I'll thank you. There you go. Mmm. That's good. That pork's good. I like that. Ah, that's all he needed to say, y'all. Uh, that's all he got. Yum, 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 yum. Dave, don't you still, I still find it a little strange that I can pick up this bowl of like miso soup. Usually back in the States, we'll have it with like a, a spoon. Right, right. <laughs> but here, they just, I'm watching a lot of the folks, excuse me, and they're just picking it up and- Just kind of drink it. They're very common to lift the bowls up and drink right from the bowl. And drink right from the bowls. And I don't feel guil <clears throat> guilty about it. <laughs> a grocery store in the Ilko Marketplace just by chance on our way to the campground. So why not stock up for some groceries? Yay, Ilko! Yay, Ilko! Definitely want to get some bananas. Yeah. Fruits and veggies is the way. And then, I don't know, should I pick up something maybe special for dinner? See if they have the Hakkaido beef? Ooh, that would be great. Hakkaido beef? Hakkaido beef. <laughs> We're still love it. After that, after the wagyu, Hakata Wagyu we had, we're I spoiled. Know, I'm very spoiled, but we're not in Hokkaido anymore, no. so we'll see we're if we can find it. Exactly. Dave, I think I found what we've been looking for. You know when we had those cucumber salads and uh, the Japanese cucumber salads which are sliced, but then there's like this ginger dressing yeah. that's I remember like Din Tai Fung we had, and of course that's on the strip. But, yeah. But that was amazing. Yeah, that was. But this is in Japan. Exactly. So we're gonna actually try, probably get some of these with some sauce. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I guess Din Tai is a Taiwanese restaurant, but it's probably yes, similar. Yes, probably. Well, anyway, this is what we're going for yeah, right we're good. Yeah. A few of these guys, and I'm gonna grab some ginger dressing. Ah, okay, now it's time to go to our, uh, how do you say, wrap station. So we'll head on over to the middle <laughs> table because uh, you bag your own groceries here. So we're going to go bag our own groceries here. So after you, my dears. So we basically needed the whole kitchen caboodle. You have to think of everything. It's not like desert snow where we have all of our essentials ready to rock, grocery store groceries. Here it's like groceries, garbage bags, cleaning products, forks, knives, chopping sticks. It's a lot of stuff. So, and then on top of that, just so you're aware, bags, when you're bagging, um, each bag is, they charge you for your bag. So either have your own, pack your own grocery bag, or save some of the ones you currently have so you can use your own later. Repurpose them, if you will. All right, so I'm gonna pack it up, and we're gonna ship it out because we're right close to the RV park, or the RV parking lot, if you will. Exactly. Yeah. It's basically a parking lot, I think. Okay, hey, this is where we have to get to the RV park. It's like we're oh, running yeah. through this really tight neighborhood. Oh, I see another RV over there. Yeah. And a cute dog. So, where are we heading? We're going to the little RV, uh, basically a parking lot with a bathroom up here, I think. Okay. Ooh, it's all kinds of weird turns here. Ooh, this is tight. 
<laughs> I know, a little tight road. This is the kind of one you hope there's a way to turn around at the top. Oh my gosh. Ooh, we're going up. Yeah, they say don't turn here. Don't turn. Uh, okay. So this is where you do not turn here. Don't Ooh, turn good there. lord. And it's like a, there's no edge on this side. Yeah. No, there's no edge <laughs> on this side. All right, and so you have to kind of go, okay, we went to the left and then keep going at. Turn left and uh, neck. Oh my god, this is really tight. You gotta hit Careful, that. Careful, dude, we got a little <clears throat> ledge here. Yeah, I also see this thing here. Hold on. Oh my goodness gracious. The wide turn. Yeah. And this is it here? This is it. Ooh. Where we're parking for the night. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Welcome. I hope, I hope it's only just one way. Because, oh my gosh, we're the back out of this. Like, well, we're going to turn around the way I come down. Oh, good lord. Oh. And there should be a parking spot up here. It's like a neat little residential area. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's very tight. Wait, where are we going? Over here. Oh my God, how do you get into all this? Oh, David, oh, watch out. Ah. <laughs> wow. And then we go into our spot. I think it's the one right next to this one, if I'm not mistaken. Woo, good gosh. I think, we're, I think we're gonna back right into this one. Woo. All right, I'm gonna get out and help you, hold on. All right. The Tanya's back it in, you got it. Fun size. Fun size. All right, all right, kind of pull it, just turn the wheel, straighten it out. Yeah, just, there you go, you got it, nice job. And then just gonna pull it straight back. Nice job, you got it. Perfect. That's fine. I think that's fine. You can go back a little more. Perfect job, nice job. Woo, we did it. Right, nice job. Fun side. That was quite the tricky turnies. It was, I know. <laughs> it was quite the tricky. We're coming out the same way, but it should yes, be fine. It should be fine. So we're basically nestled in a very cute neighborhood. It looks like there's some farming that's about to happen right down here below us. Over to this section, there's some cherry blossoms. Looks like they're starting to bloom, white cherry blossoms. And it has this really secluded neighborhood feel. So we're just gonna go for a walk and explore. You can see some of these beautiful, like uh, almost Japanese style homes. Um, not a lot of road space. So you definitely wanna pay attention to where you're going. Yeah. But that's the RV park right there. Ooh. Sorry, two cars coming. Oh, two that. cars coming. So since we made it to our camp destination for the night and we still have some sunshine, we figured why not give you a quick tour of, let's call her Juanita, because I Juanita a hot socket for later on. So let's go in and check out the inside of Juanita. So this is not going to be your traditional let's turn up world tour. We're going to give you just a quick kind of, uh, just a quick preview of what we are going to be living in here uh, over the next 12 days here in Japan. So just to give you a quick, where are we? So right now we're in a, it's almost like a boondockers welcome vibe, if you will. We found a great little parking spot here that we're parked in that does have power, but we're just outside or right around the uh, Miura, which is a city in Japan in the Kanagawa prefecture so so prefecture so it's it's absolutely beautiful the weather's a lot warmer than we have had <laughs> Here right. in Japan so far. As a matter of fact, we're gonna be going to some really cool spots to share with you. And maybe, just maybe, we can see some cherry blossoms. And I, I'm, I'm just hoping that that's the case. It feels warm enough. I'm already seeing gardens happening. So I think Dave, Dave might have nailed oh, this They're one. coming, they're, they're coming. They're coming. All right, let's get started. Welcome to our five or six person uh, camper van here in Japan. So it's a little different than our first one. The first one had a little bit more of a bunk bed situation, which in my opinion is, is cool, but not for me. I love the idea of having more of a queen space so Dave and I can snuggle up together especially on those cold nights where I can just put my cold toesies on him but it's great because this one has that another one it rolls out the top or sleeper up here that rolls out with a, a full-size bed that can sleep to up here love that it has the entertainment system in here and here is very interesting it's already connected so satellites TV is already connected so you can get all your Japanese stations on here for sure again the rules are shoes off so our shoes are off but it's so it's actually pretty cozy for the size RV that it is I mean, you have a pretty, pretty big sort of dining, uh, our workspace, and it also, this forms into a bed as well. Big window, which gives a nice uh, cross breeze is what we have going on right now. Loving this style door as well with the window in it. It almost reminds me of what they, the newer ones they put into Desert Snow. Almost like that airplane vibe. That's what it feels like. But then you, here you got your shoe compartment. This is where they actually build here in Japan. They build shells for your shoes because shoes must come off so they want a proper spot to put them so this is the second RV we've been in that actually has a compartment for your shoes so it's like a, a <laughs> 
a mud room, if you will, right, right here in the front. So your control panels, as you can see here, we're at 100% right now. It does have one solar panel, so it gives you something, not enough. It's more of a trickle charge, if you will. We're gonna plug in, so we will have to worry about any of those things, and Dave can talk more about that on the outside. But one thing I have to tell you guys, check this out. Woo! There is a lot of storage space, and it just continues on, for sure. We do not have here, I'll show you something that we do not have in just a second, but this here has plenty of options for your storage compartments here. There's another storage compartment over here. And the quality is definitely something I feel is pretty good quality in the sense of the drawers. When I open them up, I'm like, wow, that's a little bit different than Desert Snow. But loving the color scheme in here for sure too. It definitely, when I wasn't sure when I first walked in, but then the more you're in it, I'm like, wow, this feels sort of a, it has like a modern sleekness to it. I can't explain it. It just feels like that when you're in here and definitely cozy. So now I'm on the other side of the dining, living, workspace area here. And this is our kitchen. The difference between this kitchen and the last kitchen we were in, well, this one does not have a, a propane burners in it. It's more or less in line with some of the ideas where you can either put an induction cooktop, but in our case, they provided us with, which we paid for, a propane burner. I think we did not pay for that one. That may have come with it. Everything else. Yeah, yeah. But yes, um, but we do have a working sink in this one, you guys. Not, not, not just a regular sink. Almost looks almost like a Dometic style. It's a Dometic, yep, yeah, Dometic style sink. And you got the pump and features here as well. Welcome to our bedroom space. Now this is definitely more on what we would like to see in an RV when we travel. And one of the cool features here is the queen bed. So it's nice that we actually have a decent sized bed. And I will tell you, I love having this. <laughs> a window with a view in the back. There's the air con, they call it here, air conditioning that you have here for sure. So on those hot, hot summer <laughs> days and nights. Um, but I love that there's a lot of storage in here. There's actually a, a bar for your clothing. And then they actually have a uh, shelving here for your phones, trinkets, books. Now what I don't see are plugs that you sometimes see in, I have to see if there are any, but you don't see, I don't see any plugs unless they're like in the drawer space. Somewhere. Nope, I do not see any plugs for, for your <laughs> devices. No, I don't see them. Okay, so we may not have any plugs back here. So this is not super modern. Just, yeah, that's, yeah. Just missing some of those plugs. Could use some plugs, but this is where you're gonna have your, your rest, relaxation. Now there is a ladder I can use to get up here. I just, again, hopped up on the side of the bed and popped up on, I mean, side of the couch area and popped up on here. Whee! And I, I have to tell you a, a couple things really quick um, regarding the packages for this RV. I'll see you down on the road. Oh, just want to feel the vibe of the fresh air blowing through the windows as we sit here and think about the haiku I'm about to tell you. Oh, summer. Oh, cherry blossom. Oh, my. I need to see it. Ah, uh, yes, I saved the best for last. But before I get to save the best for last, let me tell you what I meant by a la carte. So when you purchase the rental RV, you get just the RV. Oh, and you also get the propane single burner that comes with it because they don't have a stove in here. Everything else is a la carte. You want bedding for your bed? That is a bedding package. That's a la carte. You want kitchen utensils, all the things you need to use in the kitchen and probably dish soap and everything else. That's a kitchen set, a la carte. You want barbecue grill, tables, chairs well that's another a la carte and i think that's kind of the system that we've noticed here throughout the two rental companies that we've used thus far here so just be prepared that you're paying for things a la carte remember when i told you earlier that there was something that um i had to share with you i wasn't too thrilled about it i'm still not too thrilled about it but we'll make do but i saved the best for last let me show you or not show you so you might be wondering where's the bathroom and i was wondering the same thing i was like is it in here um, excuse me. Hey, Mr. Bathroom, are you in here? No. And you know what? It's because there isn't one. There's no bathroom in this RV. So for the next two weeks, basically, I'm gonna have to figure it out. Hopefully every place we go to has a wash closet. Uh, toilet, if you will. The place we're in right now, there's one right next to us, right next to us. So that is a, a nice feature. I might wish I had that dang bathroom. Just saying, so, you know, no toilet. And uh, you can't pay a la carte for that. They just don't have it. <laughs> Oh, all right, y'all. So now that I gave you the outside tour, I think it's time for you to get outside so Dave can show you what this, <laughs> what the outside of our RV, Juanita, is all about. Thanks, babe. Now, why don't you guys take a quick look at the outside while I unlock the compartment? <laughs> now, this is, what's the name? Juanita. This is, one, this is a Juanita. So take a look at Juanita. I'm gonna unlock the compartment, so we'll take a look. <laughs> Just 
just real quick. This is a Toyota Camry. If it sounds familiar, well, it is. We're actually we're just in a similar chassis style up in Hokkaido, and we call it fun size. Fun size. <laughs> we call it, we call this vehicle size because it is fun to drive, very maneuverable. We actually do enjoy driving it. And you'll notice right away here at the front the mirrors. They have a ton of mirrors that give you great vision. So these are some things I think Desert Snow could be would be beneficial to have here. A little bit more on the mirror side. These are good. And when you open up. It's still just like the one in Hokkaido. It's a small space. Now I'm 6'2", so it's a bit tight for me, but I am comfortable. But don't expect kind of the US size like driving area because it is smaller, no doubt. And this right here, this right here, believe it or not, this is your power outlet. I thought it was actually a water drain for like winter draining the water, but nope, that's the power outlet right there. Now one thing this RV has in abundance is storage space. It's actually incredible the amount of storage. Starting off with this one right here. And here. And here. And here. And by the way, the last three all open up into this massive back garage space compartment. And one additional nice feature is that there's actually an opening from the inside of the home into the garage space here. So for example, if we had Brady and Bailey here, this would be a great spot for the litter. The water system inside, and it is very basic, very much like you'd find in a small van in the States. You have a five gallon freshwater tank and a five gallon gray water tank. Just, you know, plastic containers, you unhook them, you kind of take them out to dump them at an RV campground. And here's just one more small space for storage. Right now it just has some tools in it. And just a few more things quickly to point out. This does come with a manual Dometic awning, which we probably are not going to use because we just, we're very careful with awnings and that's just one more thing to break. So that's gonna stay put, no doubt about it. We did opt and pay more for uh, some optional snow tires. So we have snow tires on this. And the reason for that is we actually are gonna be heading into the mountains here. So we may actually get into, into some more snow, believe it or not. We'll see, you know, fingers crossed on that. And then up on top, there is a small solar panel, which we understand is more of like just a little bit of a drip charger. We don't expect a lot of charge from that, but there, there is a panel up on top. Well, that is the little tiny home on wheels that we'll be living in for the next 12 days. We are very, very excited. We're gonna explore a little bit more of this cute little town. Um, and because tomorrow we're meeting it with some friends. Yes, exactly. It's gonna be awesome. We actually have some friends from Japan coming to meet us in their camper van, right? And we're gonna travel around this whole week with them. It's gonna be amazing. It is. It's gonna actually be our first caravan in Japan. That sounds like it rhymes. Caravan in Japan. I love that. So, and if it does really well, maybe we could do a really big group one. In the exactly. Future. Group caravan. Woohoo! Do it. Japan. <laughs> but with our kitties. Yes, yes. <laughs> We're just walking from the RV park, just a short walk in this wonderful neighborhood. And there's, there's a beautiful temple behind us called the Tenyuan Temple. And we read actually there's a plaque out front written in Japanese and English. And apparently there's a tablet, a memorial tablet that's dated 1213 inside that temple. The history here is just unbelievable. It goes back so far. No, never in a million years could I say I'm, I'm actually drying and washing clothes here in Japan. Like, seriously, this is Miura, Japan. This is awesome. Now I just gotta figure out how to dry my clothes. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> oh, hi yo. Okay, I think that means good morning in Japanese. So we slept well. We have a pretty, pretty good drive today, only about an hour. Um, we're gonna be meeting up with our friends there. We have to get rocking and rolling now. There's a gale warning in effect. What else is new? <laughs> Always an adventure. But that's not the thing. The way we came up to get to this RV campground, the roads here are not necessarily very RV friendly. You gotta take things super slow. The way we have to go down is the way that we weren't supposed to come up. <laughs> Because the owner says this is it's perfectly fine. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it says it's perfectly fine to drive down. So Dave's kind of assessing the drive right now. I'm gonna get out and kind of guide him as he uh, takes down this hill. And then of course the biggest thing for me is that left turn where you gotta turn to get straight. And yeah, it's it's gonna be a fun project. But we'll see. I think we will be fine. 
<laughs> but it's always an adventure with us and it's probably gonna take us like an hour to get down so we better get a move on <laughs> all right so here we go yeah this is a we're actually we have to leave the rv park it's a very steep exit unfortunately the way we came in is blocked with park car, because uh, it actually was going through, which we didn't realize was some other uh, folks' property. And so the way we need to go out is, the way we avoided coming up, because it's really steep and narrow with a sharp turn. Uh, but I scouted it out and we can do it. I, I just need to hit it right. So Tina's outside actually gonna help direct me on this one. <clears throat> But it's very different. <laughs> this is not your normal RV park. If you're from the States, you're used to kind of much easier in and outs. This one is very narrow and tricky here. So we're definitely glad we have the uh, our fun size RV. All right, here we go. I'll keep it in low gear. It's going down a little bit of a hill too. Okay, here we go. Yikes. Careful, can't watch the mirror. And it's awfully windy. That's actually gale warnings today. So we're gonna have to drive really slow to meet up with our friends. We got about an hour drive there under normal conditions. One sec. Okay, let me tell about the mirrors. <laughs> We've already encountered a corner here. So, whoo, here comes the wind. So, oh my gosh, look, that is what we have to go down. That is like one of the turns right there. We have to come down around here. So Dave's gonna record me while I'm recording him, but he's gonna bring this around this tight corner around here. Oh my gosh, hold on a second. That is crazy. He's got to come down this and he's got to go around that. And there's no edges over there. I mean, that's a straight down drop. Straight down drop right over there. Oh, yay, yay. I don't want to necessarily be in the path of that as he's coming down. He's going to switch into low gear and he's coming this direction. So uh, I am so scared. Oh my God, this is kind of. Oh, here he comes. <clears throat> Sharp, 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 sharp. Okay, now he's gonna wide turn it. Dave is very good at this stuff. By the way, he's like super good. I don't know if I wanna be in the path of this. So, yeah, he's gonna wide turn it Ooh, slowly. And he's gonna sit tight on here. He's gonna sit tight and he's gonna try and turn wide from here because over here is like a cliff. Oh my gosh. Ooh, watch the front. Ooh, slowly, slowly. And we're about the back, okay? Slowly, slowly. Wow, that is really low to the ground. You can see that really low. Straighten it out, slowly. Watch the back, ah, yes! Woo, he did it, he did it! <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. All right, I think we got it, we got it. Oh my God, oh hey, my God. Great job, Helen, you, you helped a lot. You are so awesome. You helped a lot, that was you right. You rock, David, oh my God. This is, this is not your normal RV park here. Oh my gosh, yes. that was, I better get in now, cause we gotta, yeah, we got oh my God. That was great. I just nice hope job. there's no more like that ever. Yeah. Yeah. One and done. High five. Good <laughs> nice job, job to you. Woo! All right. Thanks. So we've met up with our friends and they're right in front of us right now. We'll formally introduce you to them once we get to this next destination, which is about an hour from where our meeting point was, which is at like a local mall called Mr. Max. They're right there. This is their little cute camper. Hi, Mitsuru-san. <laughs> yeah, this is a very different driving situation here in Hanshu. On Hanshu. Yeah. On Hanshu. Around this Tokyo vibe, you know, style, very busy in comparison to Hokkaido, which has seen a bit more country and scenic. So it feels more like our Midwest driving versus driving in New York. <laughs> Tight roads, one way, fun side. See, he's heading down towards the coast, so we know we're in the right direction. This gentleman right here has got his snowboard. He's got a, a surfboard. Sorry, he's got a surfboard. Looks like he is ready. And his wetsuit. A wetsuit and snowboard. Oh, surfboard. surfboard. <laughs> a wetsuit and surfboard. Yes. Wow. Uh, a lot 
of surfers here. This is amazing. We're in surfboard country. finally made it to the lovely 400 year old tea house. I'll tell you, it was quite the uh, roadway to get up here, but when you're up here, you forget about how windy it is until you have to go back down. So let's not worry about that now and enjoy this experience here at the tea house. So we want to introduce you to our friends here. So introduce. All right, I'm Mitsuru. It's Mitsuru and? Hi, Natsumi. Natsumi-san. So they're going to be with us over the next, we're going to be caravanning together. So they're in their RV, we're in our RV. We're going to have some great experiences. And this is just the beginning of them right now. And Mitsuri-san has actually planned out a wonderful trip for us over the next oh, 12 days, I guess, if you will. So a long time together. So I'm excited to, to dive into this experience here at the 400 Euro Tea House. Now, I was just told the drinks that we have, which is a comfort drink here, it's sort of a, uh, it's a rice wine, a non-alcoholic rice wine that's been really fermented. And that's where it gets its sweetness. It doesn't have any sugar. So it's great to kind of see uh, uh, this comforting uh, drink that we all get to share here together and then on top of that there are some optional uh, food items that they brought out as well which are one sweet and savory moshi style there's one sesame there's a little bit of a sweet one and of course there's the uh what's this seaweed? last one um with this, soy, this soy, is sauce flavor. soy sauce flavor seaweed with soy sauce flavor so really unique experience fun and you can just feel the spot that we're sitting in right now is the spot everyone wants to sit in when they come here. So this is definitely a, a real treat to be here and experience mm -hmm. this. So I got you guys on that. for coming. Yes. Cheers. Come by. Come by. <laughs> We got the savory, savory going here. This is the seaweed with soy sauce. With soy sauce. You add one of these on top pickles. of it. Oh, I love pickles. Have you ever had the mochi before? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. Usually in desserts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very interesting. Um, to hear about the story uh, behind uh, the mochi and on New Year's mochi is a little extra special um, during the time of New Year's when you have mochi uh, it's a, just a, a layer of good luck but there's also uh, another side to mochi where if you find mochi um, we just tried it and it's very sticky very thick so if you put a big piece in your mouth you have to make sure you chew it really slowly and because it can get stuck in here and expand Wow. And there's been a couple of cases of older folks, um, mostly older folks, where they have actually died from it. So wow. you'll go into stores and if you see Moshi, there's a warning on the packaging that actually um, warns the older folks to uh, be careful of this because it could choke you. I got a little nervous and of course, <laughs> <laughs> the seaweed side said, you're fine, young at heart, you'll be good to go. And that first one for me was delicious. I love the seaweed vibe, I love the, the story. And I always feel when you have food with great company and the stories behind the food, it actually makes the experience and the food taste even better. Fish, there's a story behind this fish and legend has it it was in initially started in China and influenced here in Japan and because the fish is a water creature it's a protection against fire so anything below the fish should be protected from fires and you would see a lot of these fishes on castles things of that nature and so why you see it here is because they want the fire to be controlled This is incredible treat. So we're right now sitting with a 13th generation family member of this amazing tea house, Yamamoto-san. I have to say thank you so much for 
doing what you do here and, and thank you for bringing us this experience. So. Thank, you. thank you guys. <laughs> so, so Yamamoto is giving you this Dochu uh, Anzen. Dochu so like Anzen. Right. Safe travel right. for you on what? our trip. Oh, I like that. I mean, Edo, this is. Edo to Kyoto made no kyori wa kaite arimasu. Ano, Amerika made no kyori wa kaite masen kedo. Ano, Anzen ni. It's not uh, all about your trip to, 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 the Amer to yeah. America, back to America, but this. Safe in Japan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Kyotsu kyotsu. This is perfect, especially because we are a little nervous to go down the mountain. Well, this will give us. Protection. Protection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got to go to the map. <laughs> So right now, it looks like the uh, it's getting some renovation, and it's uh, basically straw roofing, as you can yeah. see. This is amazing. So Parque is very. This is very famous for Hakone. Right. right. Yeah. This is actually a replica of a checkpoint that was on the old Takedo Road between Kyoto and Ito. Now we're here at actually Lake Ashi, and there used to be very strict in terms of the uh, folks that could go. They would ask a lot of questions along the way. It sounds like the, the rulers in each of the different cities were very protective. And so if you were traveling along the way, you would be asked a lot of questions. And there's actually two gates here at the checkpoint. You have the Kyoto Gate, which of course was the old capital, about 150 years ago, Kyoto was the capital for thousands of years, actually before Tokyo became the capital. Uh, and then here you have the Edo Gate, so you kind of come through, get asked lots of questions, and continue on. <laughs> Hopefully. Maybe. Maybe. Or you could end up in here for further interrogation, which, yeah, and that doesn't look warm and cozy, so just saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, captains. We're about to embark on something that we've never done before here in Japan. So as we make our way down the track here, hi, hi. I see a pirate ship coming out of the distance off to the side. See how much that's right up there? Oh my goodness gracious. Here it comes. That's the ship we're conquering today. We shall be conquering this ship today. I think I see Captain Jack Sparrow. I have something for him. Hmm. <laughs> Hopefully. Here's a bathroom for me. Yeah, the bathroom. <laughs> okay, we're boarding a pirate ship here in Lake Ashi. Entering the pirate ship. Oh. And this is truly authentic. This happened on Lake Ashi. There's many pirate attacks. Yes. yes. Ship. You had to be very careful. You did. Did you need samurai to samurai to defend you in those days? You had samurai defenders. Oh. So how many times have you taken, have you ridden the pirate ship? Yeah, it's a... Uh, many times? Yeah, I'm in size, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Beautiful, it's actually beautiful in here. Very warm, too. This is warm. This is first class, actually. Ah. Hi. Hmm. Right up top? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oh, oh. Ah. La Capitan Tanya is here, El Capitan, <laughs> ready to disembark my ship. Are you ready? This is our Are pirate you with ship. Me? 
This is our pirate ship. Our, our mates. Our. <laughs> <laughs> Did you realize that you were going to be dealing with crazy Tanya son? <laughs> <laughs> so give it. Give us a little pirate cheer. Give us a pirate yell. Let me hear your pirate yell. Oh, like a. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was good. Your turn. He had some grit in that one. <laughs> All right. Let me hear it. <sighs> So it's definitely a tourist, you're very touristy activity, yes. but it's fun. It's, it's kind fun. of fun getting out on the lake. And it's uh, absolutely beautiful out here. Dave, do you recommend first class? Well, I don't know any other class. <laughs> so, of course I recommend first class. It's very nice. You kind of, you kind of beat the line. Yeah, you so beat the you line. In, so you got to experience all the touch yeah. points. Very comfortable. You have front of the ship, you know, great windows all around. So it's, it's worth it to me. And obviously it's a, you know, it's a touristy activity here, unlike Ashu, but it's a lot of fun, right? And so if you're looking to get out on the lake and kind of explore a little bit, it's a not a bad choice. Arr. Arr. It's been such a fun day so far. I mean, it's all the different uh, sights and sounds, of course, the, the energy of the roads. <laughs> <laughs> I still have to adjust to some of the wines in there. I get out. Yeah, very, very hilly. Yeah, so I'm, I'm adjusting to that. But every destination has a unique perspective. I even love coming up here. Just randomly, we stopped at a spot that has soba noodles and beautiful views right outside the window. So it's great because I've, I've been um, just wanting to drive to the spot before dark. <laughs> no night driving for Tanya. <laughs> Dave seems to be fine, but me. Uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. But maybe after some good soba noodles, I'll be relax. <laughs> you ready? I am. I mean the smell of mushrooms is wonderful. A little kind of a udon noodle. That's a different kind that I'm used to. Mm. They're kind of this is a little different. Well I'll tell you after this. Pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting I feel like the udon noodle holds more flavor. Like it's just the mushroom flavor soaks more in this than this one. Very good. Very good. I got to go to the mass. <laughs> bye bye. All right, we're looking, we're gonna take a peek at uh, Cookie. So we have made it to our truck stop. This is our first truck stop ever in Japan. So we're here and it's actually called a road stop, right? Yes, that's it. Road stop. Fuji Oyama Road Station. What? Fuji Oyama Road Station. Fuji Oyama Road Station, yeah, yeah. to be precise. And we just picked up some groceries, which I actually threw in the RV over there. And, uh, and some ice cream. Because it's so cold out here. it's so hot. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's hot. It's just so hot, hot outside. Ice cream. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And of course... <laughs> Mixed strawberry vanilla. Strawberry and Very vanilla good. flavor. Strawberry is local, is local to this area. Yes, so which is why I got two yeah, local nice specialty. Yeah. local specialty. So we have some really fun plans coming up over the next few days. Right now we're exhausted. So plus I have to get inside to do some work for upcoming episodes, which I'm sure you guys will be enjoying <laughs> in just a bit. But we're going to say good night. Say good night. How do you say it in, in Japanese? Good night. Sayonara. Oyasumi nasai. Oyasumi. Dave, your turn. Osemi. Oyasumi. 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 Hey. Oyasumi. What? Oyasumi yasan. Nasai. Nasai. Omasumi nasai. Oyasumi is okay. Oyasumi yasan. Oyasumi. Oyasumi yasan. Let's get closer on this one. Oyasumi. Oh, yes, Sumi. <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive me. Oh my gosh, Dave. It is so fun to be caravanning with two amazing folks. I mean, Mitsuru san and Natsumi san. They're amazing, right? Oh my god, they're so great. Yeah. And uh, a lot of fun to be around. Oh, I can't wait. We're going to have so much fun this week. So much fun. They love to hike, and we're going to be staying at 
multiple truck stops, different truck stops along the way. And I have to tell y'all, seriously, these truck stops are like anything I have ever seen. Now, I'm sure each one might have a little different in its own right, but they're really cool. And we're going to be bringing it to you and why truck stops in Japan are actually cool to say. They're called road stops. Exactly. Road stops. Because trucks, they, cars, and everything else in between stay here. Yeah, <laughs> some things are very different about the U.S., so True. I'm excited to experience it. True. I'm exhausted. So, good night, my big fluffy covers. Good night.